Bojo out here checking out the oil rig. We're gonna be doing a deep dive. To all my kids out there, Ball Junior High in Anaheim, have a good one. Let's take a deep dive. Everybody at the Forest Whitaker Peace Initiative and Foundation, we're excited to work on this project together and collaborate. Let's have some fun in those oil rigs, guys. Hi, Mr. Poggio, Science Adventures and students. I'm asking all of you out there, what should California do with the decommissioning of its oil rigs? Conditions report today from February 20th, 2020 on board the Magician Boat. We are lucky enough to have incredible visibility of 100 plus feet in the Pacific today and we'll be diving Ellie and Ellen's sister rigs sitting in 260 foot of water 8.5 miles off the coast of Long Beach in federal waters. As I jump in, you'll notice the red lens on the left. That helps film color at depth as red, the color is lost below 15 to 20 feet. Right away, you'll see local resident California sea lions, their home, evidence to the robust ecosystem below. Let's begin our descent. The first 35 to 40 feet of metal scaffolding is free of life. This is intentional from hydro pressure cleaning these pipes. This structure provides safety in the open ocean to an abundance of species. Sea lions dominating the upper tier. Let's descend below the mountain brackets. Below the 40 foot mark, the ocean makes her home. Scallops and enemies, mussels, crabs, and many other invertebrates make these pillars their home, supporting smaller and larger fish populations, both local and schooling pelagic fish, bringing the term artificial reef to life on the rigs. And big thanks to Ben and the other tech divers aboard today for their footage to allow my students to see the very depths of the rig at 260 feet deep. These tech divers were breathing tri-blends including helium and rebreathers and for me personally it was a great time to observe and learn from such an array of experienced divers. Alright, let's go to a quick computer check. Don't dive without your gauges. Looks like oxygen and depth are okay. Now looking up from 100 feet deep, you can see the complexity of the oil rig and how the dual oil rigs make a large habitat complex. As we get deeper, we will be leaving the photic zone where lights are necessary for visibility and or filming. Along the ocean bed, this crustacean graveyard and brittle star sits a wolf eel and a nudie. Micro life can be even more amazing than those little carnivorous monsters. A single scallop provides the nutrition needed for a quick fish breeding frenzy. With the abundance of life, it makes sense that some in the fishing industry are huge supporters of these artificial reefs. While many in the fishing industry are against oil rig futures as artificial reefs, citing challenges like fishing nets getting caught during trawling and possibly capsizing boats. If you are wondering, yes, that is my phone. Well, as we make our way up in our ascent, it's time to decompress, literally. This deco stop is vital for divers to release excess nitrogen out of their blood to prevent the bends or decompression sickness. Lucky for us, we can enjoy playing tag with sea lions on this deco stop. Buoyancy is crucial at this stage as shooting up to the surface could prove disastrous. And as we end this dive, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Emily and Amber at Blue Latitudes, marine biologists advocating for rigs to reef here in Southern California and who have been a huge support to my students hey, here at Ball Junior High. How you doing? Mr. Pudge, you're hanging out with you, dude. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, Seal. Gotta watch out for the sharkies. Wait a second, I'm going in the water. Thanks for joining me today on this dive. Feeding these yellow senoritas is quite the sight. One of the most populous species of fish on this reef. Efficient and voracious eaters. but hanging out with a two and a half foot, 20 pound sheephead, wow. Fun fact, this species of fish are all born female. Only when a dominant male is absent will the sheephead change sex to male and claim a territory, hence his solitary nature. All organisms find their niche. This beautiful pink coral is just below the pressure wash beams above. You see the scallop? Their bright orange abductor muscles give them away. Thanks Richard for the light. What would a Southern California dive be without our state fish, the Garibaldi? This solid orange color fish is an adult as juvenile have bright blue spots. Garibaldi are very territorial, 
as well, and one of the largest species of damselfish in the ocean. As we wrap up this dive, reminder that this unique ecosystem is present due to the oil industry. Now with Rig Helen and our other 27 SoCal oil rigs up for decommission, how can you help determine their fate? Oil companies are contractually obligated to remove the rigs, but is that the best option? With possible outcomes like complete removal, rigs to reef, ecology studies, rig repurposing and more, what is the best solution? Stakeholders from the oil industry, fishing industry, environmentalists, local and federal government, and you all play a role in this decision-making process. Environmentalists are on both sides of this issue, citing rigs to reef as an ecosystem booster. Blue latitude biologists confirming this with data from transecting species populations in Malaysia. But other environmental supporters see rigs to reef as ocean dumping and metal erosion increasing the problem of ocean acidification. The fishing industry has supporters in both sides as well. Join me and Blue Latitudes in supporting our marine ecosystem and take an active role through sharing this video and knowledge about our oil rigs in Southern California. What should happen to the future of the decommissioned Southern California oil rigs and the other 2,000 plus active oil rigs worldwide? And students, I'd like to end with, life needs water. Water does not need life. If we can't protect our largest water source, how can we live? Thank you and see you in class. Mr. Poggio.